Hello, and welcome to this video about measuring simple harmonic motion. In this video, we're going to look at uh, what amplitude, period, and frequency of a wave are. We're going to look at the period of a simple pendulum and the period of a mass spring system. Now, if we consider that fun ride on the previous page that goes back and forth, it looks a lot like a pendulum. Uh, if we think of its starting position here, where it's maximum displacement from equilibrium when the ride is clear up at the top, it's going to swing back and forth uh, with this harmonic motion. Uh, and the amplitude of that ride, or that pendulum, is going to be the maximum displacement from equilibrium. Uh, that would be its position here or here. That would be the amplitude. The SI units of amplitude are either radians or meters. Uh, the period of this pendulum is represented with a capital T, and it's the time that it takes for the uh, bob, in this case, to complete one cycle of motion. So the period would be the time it takes to go from here back to here again. Frequency, on the other hand, we uh, designate with a lowercase f. Frequency is the number of cycles or vibrations per unit of time. And that uh, SI unit is hertz. One hertz is a second to the negative one or an inverse second or a per second. Um, frequency is equal to one over the period. And conversely, the period equals one divided by the frequency. The two are inversely proportional to each other, so um, you can always use this relationship uh, in your calculations. Um, if you're given one value, you can always calculate the other. So the period of a simple pendulum depends on two things, string length and free fall acceleration. Uh, if we shorten this string length, the time it takes to execute a complete cycle of motion will be shorter. Also, the period of a pendulum depends on free fall acceleration. So if we were to put this pendulum on the moon, it actually, uh, the, the time it takes to complete one cycle is going to t be longer and take a little bit longer. Therefore, we have this wonderful equation that um, we can use uh, for the period of a simple pendulum in simple harmonic motion. That would be T, the period of the pendulum, equals 2 times pi times the square root of the string length divided by free fall acceleration. So why does the string length affect the period of a pendulum? Um, here we have two pendulums, uh, pendulum one and pendulum two. Here's string length one and string length two. When we decrease that string length, you can see that the distance that the bob of this pendulum is traveling um, to equilibrium decreases also. Um, acceleration is going to be equal in both cases, uh, so the shorter pendulum string will have a smaller period. So mass is not in our equation. Mass does not affect the period of a pendulum. Isn't that interesting? Also, amplitude is, has no part of this equation either. It does not affect the period of a pendulum for small angles. And when we say small angles, we mean angles uh, that are less than 15 degrees. So why is this true? Well, here, uh, if we look at pendulums that have different masses, um, where the bob is a different mass, the heavier mass will give a greater restoring force, but it also needs a larger force to achieve the same acceleration. Um, it's a similar idea to objects in free fall. Remember, if we drop two objects that have different masses, they still have the same acceleration due to gravity. So it's the same idea uh, when it comes to the period of a pendulum. Also, amplitude. You would think if you held this bob up higher, maybe it would go faster. Well, and have a shorter period. Well, um, when we, it's, it's a similar idea here. Remember that our equation force, force equals mass times acceleration. So force is proportional to both mass and acceleration. And when we increase the amplitude of a pendulum, the restoring force also increases proportionally. Um, so the distance that the pendulum must cover 
is also greater, but for small angles, the effects of those two quantities cancel out and the pendulum's period remains the same. Let's try a quick problem. Let's say we have a little desktop toy swinging back and forth on the desktop once every 1.0 seconds. How tall is this toy? We know the frequency uh, is that it's swinging uh, back and forth once every 1.0 seconds. That's one hertz. We know G. Uh, we need to find L, the length of the how tall this toy is, the length of that string. We know our equation is uh, the period equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Well, frequency isn't in here, is it? Um, just T for the period. How are we going to convert frequency into period? Remember our relationship. They're just inversely proportional to each other, so we can um, see that the period will also be simply one second. Now we can plug our values into this equation and solve for the period. Uh, the easiest thing to do usually in this case would be uh, take one and then divide by the two and pi. Uh, and then we can square the left side of the equation at that point. And that gets rid of that square root um, in our algebra expression. Solving for L gives us 0.25 meters or 25 centimeters tall. That makes sense for a little desktop toy. So what about the period of a mass spring system? Uh, like we talked about in our last video, uh, if we have a system where we have a mass on a spring and we pull it back and this is our equilibrium point or we compress it and it bobs back and forth between the two, the period of a mass spring system is going to depend on two things and they're going to be different things than for the pendulum. They will depend on mass and the spring constant. And we see that in the equation of the mass spring system. Um, the period equals 2 pi times the square root of the mass on the end of the spring, divided by the spring constant. So mass counts when we're talking about the period of a mass spring system as opposed to the bob, um, because in this system, the increase in inertia with the heavier mass um, will give it a smaller acceleration than the light mass, and it will take more time for it to complete one cycle of motion. In other words, that will have a greater period. In the case of our pendulum, um, that heavier mass increased both the force on the bob and the bob's inertia. Um, and that is not the case here because uh, in this spring system, um, the increase, we're increasing the inertia with in while we're increasing the mass without having a compensating increase of force. And then also, the different uh, idea of a spring constant is very important in um, the period for simple harmonic motion of the mass spring system. Let's do a quick problem. Let's say we have a one kilogram mass attached to an end of a spring and it completes one oscillation every 2.0 seconds. Find the spring constant. We know the period is 2.0 seconds, time it takes to complete one oscillation, the mass is 1.0 kilograms, and we would like to find the spring constant. And we can use our equation for the period of a mass spring system and plug our values in and solve for the spring constant. Again, it's pretty simple if we take um, uh, our 2.0 seconds divided by 2 pi, and, uh, of course, that equals then the square root of 1.0 over k. Uh, then if we square both sides, um, that makes it a little bit easier to deal with that square root, or gets rid of the square root, <laughs> 1 over k. And we can solve then for our spring constant. Here is 9.9 .9 newtons per meter. Some advanced ideas. Uh, Conceptual challenges in your textbook, page 449, make up your own problems. Any other ideas you have would be great, and I look forward to seeing you in class.